I am here with Marcus Doss. He's a bass baritone who is playing King Thoas in Iphigenie en Tauride at the Canadian Opera Company. Mm -hmm. Am I right? That's correct. <laughs> Very good. Tell me about King Thoas. Well, uh, he's a, not that complex a character, I think. Uh, he arrives on the scene uh, almost at the very beginning of the opera, and uh, he's pretty much terrorized by these uh, voices that he hears. He's been to the oracle, and the oracle says, you know, if you let one of the strangers uh, slip by your, uh, slip through your net, sort of, because on this island of, uh, of Taurus here, the, uh, he has the, the tradition of killing all the strangers that land on the island, uh, mm -hmm. so they have to be sacrificed to Diana. Um, so that's the uh, tradition. And he's like saying, gone to the oracle, and the oracle says, if one slips through, you're doomed. You're going to be just destroyed and, and just t torn apart, basically. So he's okay. terrified when he arrives. And uh, then he tells his priestess, which is uh, Iphigenie, she's been in installed on the island by uh, Diana, who uh, is, it goes back a little bit further into mythology, but you know, the father Agamemnon was uh, told that he has to sacrifice his daughter by Diana because she was ticked off by something in the Trojan War. So he, you know, he says, okay, fine. And then she takes pity on her and she spirits her off to this, this island. So she's now the priestess and she has to be the person in charge of killing these strangers. So a couple of Greeks arrive, uh, one happens to be her brother. He says, okay, let's take them out. They have to be killed. And, uh, and then she finds out throughout the opera, I mean, that uh, she's got a brother and this is the friend of the brother. So he comes back at the end of the opera and he mm -hmm. says, you know, what part of killed these guys didn't you understand, basically? You know, so he's really very upset. And uh, he gets overthrown at the end, and uh, you know. So he has no moral died. conscience whatsoever. Well, <laughs> moral, I don't know. I mean, because uh, he does have this uh, duty that he seems to have to perform to uh, you know the goddess mm -hmm. Diana, and um, his his desire is just to make sure that gets done. Yeah, I mean, it's like a military; it's the general, it's the, the king saying this is the way it has to happen, and he can't uh, make a lot of compromises. Okay, it's a big role. Have you played other kings? Oh, well, yes, I think, uh, trying to think I did uh, King Philip in uh, the Don Carlos, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Verdi opera. Uh, that was the French version I did in, uh, in Boston mm -hmm. uh, during 9-11, actually, uh, strangely enough. So it was a very tense sort of time to do uh, King Philip. But, uh, yes, it's a tragic, that's a tragic uh, character, uh, very much more than, more than this one. Um, I know Sir Lawrence Olivier talks about the difficulty of doing these kind of characters that are always saying, oh, woe is me, I'm always this and I'm always that, and because there are only so many ways you can do that when he played Otello, when he played uh, right. some of the other. Uh, so I, I see that, you know, it certainly it r requires you to dig as deep as possible to bring out as many of those colors of that, you know, oh dear, I don't want to be put upon. Uh, but, uh, you know, Toas has another vengeful side too because he has this mission and thing that has to be accomplished. So. Philip is one that, that, that comes to mind. I um, can think of many others right now, but uh, and it's a big one. You tend to play a lot of villains, right? A lot of villainous characters. Some of the villains, yes. Uh, the villains in uh, Tales of Hoffman, for mm -hmm. instance. I did uh, Detroit not too long ago. Um, also, the devils, uh, you know, Mephistopheles and Faust. I was going to ask you yes. about the devil. You are very well known for playing the devil, yes. aren't you? Uh, the devil, you say, yes. I mean, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a wonderful role. Uh, the Mephistopheles, the actual opera by Boito, yes. um, is one that I've, I've done in uh, Frankfurt, the hometown of Goethe. Mm -hmm. That's his, uh, his story, basically. So, so did you go back yeah. and read Goethe and look at all the mythology? Oh, definitely, mythology? yes. Well, at, the, at the very beginning, I also did that. I mean, when I studied the... Uh, Faust at uh, university, I was told that I should uh, certainly get the book at Goethe and also some of the Marlowe uh, plays, uh, The Damnation of Faust. I mean, those are things that are part of the story and the, uh, the mythology of that whole situation. Um, wonderful app that I have, you know, on the iPad, you know, as mm -hmm. we use always, yeah. is for <laughs> mythology. I think about three of them, actually. I just download as many as possible, and you can cross-reference one to the so other. So you have myth apps. Well, exactly. Does that and help you? They're <laughs> wonderful. Even little games you can play, mythology, you know, figure out which, uh, so you don't miss anything, mm -hmm. because they're easy to miss which god is which, and, you know, and the mm -hmm. Greek and the, and the Romans, they sort of get uh, confused sometimes. There's a lot so. to keep track of. So that's great, and, and it keeps me uh, entertained, because it's kind of a fun little game there. You get your scores up high and whatnot. So you also played John the Baptist, right? Yes. Which is at the other end of the spectrum of talking about devils, as far as religion is concerned. Mm. What was it like playing him in Salome? Fantastic. I mean, I can't, I can't say anything more. Uh, you know, I mean, it's the sense of going from the seminary and wanting to do something that is profound and uh, 
and revealing as far as your devotion and your your love for um, you know Christ and and when you're singing these lines uh, that are just so amazing you know you're talking to Salome and I'm saying you know go and seek him he's in a boat uh, on the on the water and then mm -hmm. uh, you know on the shore go up to him and kneel before him ask forgiveness he forgives all those who come before him you know and I'm singing gorgeous Strauss music with that so it's just the fulfillment of of a lifetime I did this at La Scala and that was uh, for me, probably the time when I could, uh, I, I thought I could die afterwards. Uh, it was really? a, such a wonderful second performance <laughs> I did. I had two of them to do. And, you know, uh, I had uh, Lauren Mazel come up afterwards and uh, congratulate me on the, the performance. And that was, um, again, something I thought, well, you know, you've proclaimed the, the word of God here on the stage of La Scala, one of the biggest opera houses mm -hmm. in the world. And I thought, this is probably. This is what I. This is where it is. This, this is I don't know if it gets any better than this. As good as it gets, what is that? Something like that. So you. I uh, was there. You had attended seminary college. Right. At one point, right? Mm -hmm. What was that like, and how did you decide to leave that to go into singing? Well, the Society of the Precious Blood does um, sort of the ministry for. Um, this is missionary work and also teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I had uh, looked forward to doing some teaching, possibly in math, as a, as an instructor. Um, because I'd done well in math in high school, and so I'm in the seminary now, a college seminary, and uh, I came a little short on the, uh, the, the background for math, so I, okay. I thought I'd better use something that would be connected to the, uh, the ministry, so I went to sociology, wanting to minor in music, because I had okay. shown some aptitude in music uh, before then. And uh, so, yeah, I went through the whole process of pretty much going into it as if I was going to a monastery, uh, because this was my first time doing really? it. Yes, well, <laughs> uh, <Commitment>. <laughs> well, I, I thought so. I mean, that's what I, what I really wanted. I mean, my uh, my colleagues and whatnot had come from the uh, minor seminary, which was a more high school uh, high school type seminary. Mm -hmm. So, I was in the situation where I wanted to uh, to start out sort of fresh in some ways. They had been four years in a high school seminary. They were okay. going through the regiment of uh, you know morning prayers, night prayers, mass daily, and they thought, oh well, maybe it's time to get a little more flexibility in the schedule, which isn't bad. I, I can't uh, condemn them, but I was there looking for a rigid life. Um, I had been recruited, almost recruited to go to West Point okay. at the same time. So I was uh, from high school then praying about where I should go. Was it West Point or was it the seminary? Uh, obviously there's regiment in both, or as I conceived of it, regiment in both mm -hmm. sides. Uh, so I, I prayed about it, and that's probably why I went to the seminary instead of, you know, just going out and worrying about it or something or having a fight over the situation.